Hey, I'm just looking at Facebook. Me, myself, and I. Now I could stream this to the Trail Dudes channel. I could if I knew how to change my settings. Oh, wait, I've got an idea. Oh, I do. Let's go into the old creator studio right now. Well, the YouTube studio now. They're always changing things. Creator Studio Classic. Live streaming. Yeah, there I am. Oh, yeah, baby. Now, there's the setup. And I know I'm streaming. And I'm the only one watching. Oh, God. 15 minutes now. Uh. Hmm. Yeah, sir. Encoder set up. Now, in the server URL and the stream key, well, that's for that coming from YouTube. It's already been done through Zoom. How do I reset Zoom? I wish I knew. Advanced settings. No, don't click that. Okay, I won't click it. Add stream info. Optional features. Go live. Well, I'm already live. Anytime you see any content, you're live. Well, thank you for that, Facebook. Oh, wait. Oh, someone else is watching. Hmm. Maybe that's Nick watching now. And uh, yes, I do have a filter or two applied to my stream. Now the link to join the stream. That link is on Facebook and in a private message. It's that Zoom link. Because I'm using Zoom to stream to Facebook. Because you can do it. Now... How to, what was wrong with her? No. Robert is Oh, oh, here we go. Hello, Nick. What's up? Oh, how you doing? Good, how are you? I can take this off. Zoom has excellent noise cancellation. And uh, let's go there. Oh, go to live. There you are. We're live streaming on my YouTube channel. Now it's unlisted. Anyone with the link can watch. But And I can make it public later. Awesome. But I can, I can edit it first because the first 15 minutes are me just mumbling to myself. <laughs> and uh, this filter might be distracting, I admit. Let me, let me go to the effects there's one there i am there you are nice there to meet you robert this is the first time i've seen you face to face yes nice to meet you too oh my hair is a little messy which is oh, why i had the hat on pull this this hair through and oh that looks that looks really bad i really need to uh i really need to get a uh, i got some equipment coming right in your microphone like yours oh well my equipment level is pretty basic um well for well, the mic. Better, you know, it's better than mine. I just got earbuds in, so it kind of, I get it. Because I'm uploading all mine to YouTube, you know, and then I, I want to grow that, and I want a better clarity. And I'm also using the front face of my camera, which is not the best camera to use either. So uh, it's, not, yeah. it's, it's, not, it's not the best picture when I upload them to YouTube. But That's true. Um, yeah, I just I just kind of stumbled onto the Zoom, the, the Zoom ability to stream onto YouTube because they just call it special streaming service. And uh, I was like, what does that mean? I'm going to click on it and see. And then I just saw the RTMP server and, and that. And I said, well, let me put my YouTube channel in there. One of them, that is. And boom, here it is. Nice. And how, how, many, how many subscribers? I uh, can't talk. How many subscribers do you have on YouTube? Oh, Whoa. Oh. oh, on this one, there's, there's only a few on this one. Gotcha. Because um, this is uh, a channel that came with my G Suite. Um. 
Now my other one, there's only 250 some odd subscribers. Gotcha. And so they all came right now. I'm at eight. <laughs> I'm just starting my YouTube. I, <coughs> I, I neglected it for so long. Now I'm actually putting, cause I want, I'm, I'm downloading. I have an app that actually have tonight's downloading right now. Well, I know um, a few people on YouTube. On stuff. Do you? I'd say yes. Now a lot of them live in Japan. They're expats living and working in Japan. One of them is the self-proclaimed godfather of J vlogging. And that would nice. be, give me a break, man. Give me a flake, man. <laughs> that's the that's his channel names, but it's Victor. His name is Victor. Okay. Another one, um, Hiko Simon. His name is Simon, but Hiko Simon is the name he's chosen for YouTube. Um, Sundays, he streams Tokyo Tonight. And it comes on, because he's streaming at night in Japan, it comes on oh. at 8.30 in the morning on Sunday. And that's, that's currently, and has been for some time, my favorite YouTube show. He has a very soothing voice. That's and, right. What does he talk about? Um, mostly uh, topics in and around Japan, because he's Japan-centered. Um, he likes tech stuff and uh, leans towards law, because he is a lawyer. Um, gotcha. Oh, that may be a secret, but oh, it's out now, Hiko. Sorry about that. And uh, yeah, it's all good for that. And I'm going to choose a Zoom background because there, I can be able That's to That's awesome. This yeah, is my like favorite that. one. But this is a close second. And this is not a Zoom background. It's a, it's a Honda Grom. I want nice. one. I want one. I like how I, that I, literally, that's just the Zoom doing that? Yeah, that's Zoom. That looks like your background, like, you're on a, like you have a green screen with a projection behind you. Well, I do have a green screen. Uh, it's just Too green sure. fabric. Um, the whole kit. Um, with the frame and three different fabrics was $70 Canadian delivered from Amazon. $70? Yeah, that's, that's Canadian. It? So what's what's that, like 50 US maybe? Yeah. And it's good quality? Yeah, it's good enough. Sure. And it, it survived my cat. And <laughs> that's, that's she pretty can get started, really though. violent with things. Yeah. And, oh, you got one of those too. Good. I love cats. Do you oh, vape on? I do vape. <laughs> v God Pro. I got a I stick power. Is that does that only do that on your back the back screen because you have the green screen? Yeah. Yeah. So this is a, a Vupu drag. These are awesome, by the way. Now I forgot I forgot the name of this one, but it's a DNA 250 chipset. And uh, this is an Elite version 2 dripper. Nice. It's a 28 millimeter dripper, which is, it's a bit big. And it like 130 watts on this. For, for it to work half decent. Hmm. And another one of my recent DNA 75C chipset. Nice. So you get the. Uh, Do they have different. What, what makes you decide which one you're going to hit? Um, oh, they all have the same flavor in there. Oh, uh, gotcha. Just, you know, variety. Oh, this is a dead rabbit dripper. What's that mean? That's the name of it. Oh, uh, gotcha. It was a collaboration between a YouTube guy. Is it going to focus? Yeah. Focus, focus camera. Well, <laughs> there's a dead rabbit on there. Trust me. <laughs> um, this is my favorite tank right now. This is a 41 millimeter tank, Steam Crave Titan, which nice. needs coil change, which is why I'm not vaping on it because it tastes like. Um, Paint thinner right now. Ew. It's uh, got a series build in it, as opposed to dual parallel. So it's almost one ohm resistance. It can chuck some clouds. <laughs> Look at this. This one has seven wraps both sides on the build. Nice. This is what mine looks like. Oh yeah. It's a little black right now, but. <laughs> so is mine. So is mine. So this is uh, I, it looks like the zipper kind of wire, you know what I'm saying? Like the yeah. Yeah. yeah, mine, mine is like a, a stapled Clapton wire. And this is like a Genesis style RTA, I guess. So you have to do this because the wicks only goes down to the bottom. Right, 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 right. right. And I'm vaping this in voltage mode, so four and a half volts. Point two resistance. 
66 watt and I have 0.37 ohms. Yeah. It's a little high in resistance because I did seven wraps on each side. That's all I could fit in there. Now this one has, this one's like 0.19 ohms on this. This is, again, it needs to be cleaned, but it's yeah. a post postless deck. Very easy to wick. Nice. You, you can see my wick. My wick needs to be changed badly. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this this was thirty six dollars Canadian. This little tank. This little dripper. Are you in Canada? I am in Toronto. Gotcha. I heard Toronto's beautiful. It can be. That's I, where Bob Proctor lives. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. But I'm I quite happy to be here. Yeah, I was invited to Toronto in February, but I couldn't make it. I was actually invited to Bob Proctor's home. Wow, that would have been cool. Yeah, I work with, I have a good friend, uh, Darren Gibson. He's Bob Proctor's right-hand man, and I talk to Darren quite a bit. I have Lyndon Proctor's cell phone number. Mm. Oh, what's that? It's a Plymouth. That is awesome. I want a damn green screen. Yeah, it's it's nice. I'm the mic out of See, I had I had a Plymouth satellite two door for my first car when I was sixteen, and uh, it didn't look like that. It was maroon, <laughs> and it had some rust, and I had to patch the floorboards, and replace the timing chain and the brakes before it was roadworthy. But the car itself was a hundred dollars, and seven hundred fifty wow. put it on the road thanks to the auto shop at school, and I drove that all through school, doing brake torques at every single stop sign, because. I thought that's what you were supposed to do. And I had one of those little tiny steering wheels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I would go around right-hand turns, just like the police did on all those detective shows, with swinging sure. the back end out. and <laughs> yeah. So my car would look like it's going to tip over, but and it's sideways. And Miraculously, I survived high school without one ticket. Awesome. No, no speed. Did you, grow, you grew up in Toronto? Uh, I grew up in many places. Uh, but fortunately, I was able to go to high school in one school, and that was Stephen Leacock near Birchmount and Shepherd. Okay. Um, I had lived in North Carolina just before that. And before that, I was in Pushland, which was out in the country, um, close to Guelph. And uh, that was, I had a lot of fun out there. That was great. And when we moved from there, I wasn't happy that we were moving to North Carolina. My mother's American, my wife's American. A lot of my relatives are American. But when I moved to North Carolina, to Clayton, North Carolina, and if that sounds familiar, that's because that's where Ty Lopez was lying yeah. on that couch in that mobile home. And I also lay, laid on the couch in a mobile home. So when I saw that video, I was searching for someone for some guidance when he first put that video out. And I was like, whoa, I heard Clayton, North Carolina. And I wrote him a letter. I said, you, got, you had me when you said that. And uh, joined the, I did the 67 step program. And uh, that's a lot of information it throws at you. I was familiar with much of the initial lessons, like the Dale Carnegie and Napoleon yeah. Hill and uh, Norman Vincent Peale, one of my favorite books, Enthusiasm Makes a Difference. I have not read that. Oh, it's an awesome book. And I still believe enthusiasm makes a difference. Absolutely. I remember one poor fellow that decided to import weights from China because I used, I used to work out until about seven years ago and my shoulders still screwed up. Um, I was in there and I was like, wow, these, these prices are so good. I mean, they're so much cheaper. They're cheaper than the plastic weights with concrete in them. And I was telling everybody at the gym and I worked at the gym part time at Gold's Gym in Mississauga. And I said, you got to go to the store because he has Olympic weights. He has everything. Mm -hmm. I must have sent all of Etobicoke and, and Mississauga over there because I'd go back over there to buy some more weights for myself. And he goes, you know, I'm so busy now. I need someone, I need a hand here. Do you want a job? And I was like, no, no, I, don't. I didn't want a job. I had a full-time job and it was um, like rotating hours. And uh, was ne theoretically I knew my schedule, mm -hmm. but in the end of the, at the end of the day, I really didn't. So I couldn't take another part-time job there. But yeah, I gave him so much business. He couldn't keep up with it. <laughs> he had to hire some help. Uh, much to the chagrin of everyone else selling weights in the state, made from the states, imported from the states. Let's go back to San Francisco, shall we? Or That's not? Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, I've been Golden Gate Bridge, right? Mm-hmm. 
Let's see Daisy Duke. Remember her? Yeah. Oh, there she is. Oh. Well, that's not the best angle, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's her. So do you have a podcast? Uh, uh, do, you, do you go live a lot? Well, I go live Saturday mornings, and it's an adult chat show. And that's been ongoing for five years. And the founder awesome. is Simon, and he lives in Belgium. And Simon and Dean, the other co-host who lives in um, Adelaide, Australia, we've been doing it for five years. We get guests on every week. And we have a special time this week on Sunday because Starlet Shea will be on. And she's one of my favorite YouTubers. Awesome. Has been for a while. Um, so when we have guests on, we generally cater, let the guests carry the show. Sure. Because everyone, we got to know each other in front of an audience. That's how the show started. So I went through all my funny dating stories because I had a lot of them. Because <laughs> I dated an awful lot. And it seems I have this thing for road, Plymouth Roadrunners, don't I? Yeah, I see. Oh, I sure do. That's a face I fell in love with. So that, is that letter, is that projected onto your green screen? Or is uh, that no, just working it's, through the camera. It's working through the camera. This That's is this impressive. is by this is via Zoom. Um, when you have um, a pro membership in Zoom, which is fifteen US a month, um, you get to add a virtual background, and you can add your own photos. Which I, obviously I have scoured Google for pictures of Roadrunners. You I, have to buy the webinar to go live, though, don't you? No, you don't. 50, 50, you don't. I was thinking that too, and then I saw, oh, they let you they let you stream live to Facebook for work. And uh, I don't have that. I don't have that because I just don't have the money for that. Oh, there goes the camera. And there it's back again. Yeah, um, I, I have 10% left. I might have to switch out and go to. Oh. Um, I might have to plug it in. I'm so I might have to just talk and not have my earbuds in. Okay, no problem. But this is Zoom. You can add participants just with that URL that you clicked on. Mm -hmm. No, You can click on it again if you wish. But if you have to do if you have to do something else, that's cool too. Now we can talk about enthusiasm or gratitude. Can you? Yeah, I mean, oh, that's a that's a good one. Gratitude is the key to everything, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, how do you tell if you got viewers? Um, well, yeah. the YouTube channel actually. Um, <laughs> to watch YouTube, now. I'm as probably as soon as my video is done downloading on my iPad, I'm going to go into your YouTube channel and like it, subscribe to it. Uh, okay. Yeah, this, this YouTube channel doesn't have much love because I don't even advertise it. And it's the same name as my 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 longtime YouTube channel. Oh. How, how many Where's subscribers my, do you have on the other one? 252 on the other one. Gotcha. And it, I haven't been going for subscribers on that either. Um, how do you get subscribers on YouTube? Uh, well, my first video... Someone, someone, another YouTuber at Golden State Saga, Jerry of Golden State Saga, said it would be really cool if you could make a video about work because I used to drive the subway. So I went to work and asked them, and they said oh, they got back to me. Now, neither one of us, the supervisor I asked or, or myself, knew that we had a whole media department to go through. Mm -hmm. So they said, well, yeah, just make the video, and you can't make any money on it. And I said, okay. So I shot a few pictures. I had footage of the tunnel, and I did a voiceover. And it was about 12 and a half minutes long. And it got featured on Canada AM, a local national television show awesome. and uh, I got 22,000 views on that before someone at work decided they didn't like it after two and a half years it had been up 22,000 yeah for, nice. that's okay for the first video that's, 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 that's okay. where a lot of yeah. my subscribers came from they came from they were transit fans there's a lot of transit fans out there Wow. and uh, yeah, well, that's what it was and uh, I did. I did one challenge: make a video every day for the month of April. And some of those videos weren't even a minute long. I just said what was on my mind, and inevitably, whatever it was, was something self-help, self-improvement related. You know, like when you first have a dream, when you have a new something that's exciting you, you have to protect it within yourself. Yeah. Because there are people that will steal your dream just like that, just because they're not happy and they think. If they're not happy, no one else around them should be happy. That's right. Hurt people hurt people. Yeah. No, I'm not like that. I mean, I, I love it when people people are successful, you especially know, when I, I know them. Yeah. Well, and I feel like if you if you aren't rooting for other people to succeed, you're not going to succeed yourself. I mean, because we're, we're a mirror. 
Right? Mm. We're a mirror image. So what is within us is what we see in others. Yeah, that's why I watch these live streams. Um, Cause I get excited. I get excited for these people, like Lauren Harris, his bathrobe moments. Lauren Harris, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, not today because I was I had a bad. I need to catch more of those. I don't I don't catch a lot of his, but yeah. I love Lauren. I was in bed all day with back pain. Um, I am retired. I took early retirement from my job. Um, but the day before, he had Greta Greta on, and it was about gratitude, and she's a gratitude leadership coach. And boy, did I drop some love bombs in those comments. Oh, yes. And she's my friend on Facebook now, too. Yeah, gratitude is where it's at. I have a license plate in my in my drawers here that say gratitude phonetically. And no longer on this. That was on my, my last car. Um, this car, I just took the plate that the dealer had. Um, although I like this car even better. Um, I like cars. I'm a car guy. But I'm also a computer guy, tech guy. Now your battery must be getting pretty low. Yeah, let me uh, plug it in here. I'm just going to take my earbuds out. Oh, and Zoom. Zoom has great noise cancellation. So you could actually talk without the earbuds in. This is a theory. As, as you can see, I've got my mic. You're coming through my speakers. And... Uh, yeah. So I can hear you a little bit. You're a little quiet, but that's because. That's okay. Perfect. I can get closer. I can get closer. Closer to the microphone. You're perfect. Like, I love that mic has good, really good sound. Yeah. Yeah. We were playing around with it last night because I, I have so many friends in Japan. And, um, you know, a lot of those uh, YouTubers, they get over there and they look, it's a vending machine. It's Japan. <laughs> <laughs> this calls for a Diet Pepsi. And no, they are not a sponsor. I just like it. Hmm. <laughs> you look professional there. Mm, thank you. Mm. You get used to, you get used to it. But I've been on a few people's live streams. I was on Doctor PPP's live stream on Valentine's yeah. Day. I was, I was prepared emotionally for that. So I told the story of how I met my wife. How I attracted. I used the law of attraction. I used that faith of a mustard seed. The sec only second time I've ever used it. The first time I used it without realizing it, and I only realized it a, li a year later. I had stood up. I was at a family dinner, and I stood up for some reason. I said, I don't know where the money's going to come from or any details, but one year from today, I will be in Tokyo. And then I sat down, and I promptly forgot about it. Well, someone at the table believed me. They believed with me. Because one year from that day, I was on a train from Chichibu heading to Ikebukuro to go to Akihabara to buy parts to build a computer for my girlfriend in Tokyo. So I was like, wow. oh, that, that really works. I, I read a few books, The Tongue, A Creative Force, and Hung by the Tongue, both talking about how important it is, how important your words are, because um, they're like your seeds. You can plant them. Yeah, I mean, and like when I met my wife, when I met my wife, or well, actually, this goes back, I had been frustrated with online dating. And I had sworn off getting married again after my my divorce. Um, but here I was frustrated. I was so frustrated. I said to my friend, in out of frustration, I said, why can't I meet someone that's just like me, except a girl? And when I said that, two things happened. I was like, boom. I was like, oh. I, saw, I realize I have all the qualities of character I'm looking for in a partner. And number two, I actually want a partner. So I had some mental housekeeping to do because I was in some major depression then. And uh, once that was ready, uh, there's a fellow called Mully, and he's got a YouTube channel called War Moth Strat. And he was, he was doing a Christmas collaboration video where we had to say within 30 seconds what we wanted for Christmas. So I said in 30 seconds... I hope that anyone out there who's looking for a mate happens to you what happened to Molly when he saw Tomoko for the first time and thought, she's the one, including myself. And having said that, I knew I needed one person to understand what I had said and believe with me, and that person was Phyllis, a friend of Molly's. And once I saw that in the comments, I was like, boom, 
okay, 2013 will be the year I meet this person. And the only thing I need to do is be able to recognize her for who she is. Right. And uh, meanwhile, we started the show. Simon said, Simon had an idea for a show that was more involved with the audience, more, um, would more interact with the audience than, than the show that we had been watching where we met in the comments. So we started it. And one of the things that came up, I used to get kind of a premonition when someone new was going to come into my life, maybe a week and a half to two weeks before. And I asked Simon and I asked Ian, did this ever happen to you? And they said, no. Well, I said, it happened to me and it's happening right now. So mark my words, a week and a half to two weeks from now, someone new will come into my life. And a week and a half later, on a Wednesday, Sarah sent me the first message, which was a video that she had made that I inspired her to make about celiac disease, which she has. And I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. And I looked at her video and I thought, she looks pretty young, like really young. And she was 26, but she was a graduate student in molecular biology. And she's a PhD candidate. And I said, well, let's just see where it goes. We had her on the show as a guest a couple of times. And I was the one that helped her configure her webcam. And I just kind of pushed to have these little video calls every day. And she was a little wary at first, but I let her decide the pace. And this might sound familiar, but I waited until I was 38% sure that she was the one. And then I went for it. And uh, by the time we met in person in September, uh, we already knew we were going to get married. And um, in uh, January 24th, 2015, we got married. And she wasn't able to come to Canada right away. Uh, and she did. She got her PhD and she was working in her field. And the last thing she worked on was a paper for NASA. Uh, they did a study on how the radiation in space would affect the astronauts, the radiation that they currently are unable to uh, shield against. And the conclusion was that um, a return trip to Mars would result in a reduced lifespan for the said astronauts. And uh, then she came here and she's wow. still here. She's in the bedroom applying for jobs because uh, she kind of burned out in graduate school because Toronto is a good place to work for cancer research but not if you've kind of burned out in the process of getting your, getting your degree. Sure. And uh, so she's still looking. She went in, she took a boot camp in full stack developing web, web development. And she seems to like that. But there's one thing that's missing. I noticed from a lot of millennials and she is a millennial enthusiasm. So I have to be her enthusiasm. Um, and believe me, enthusiasm is something that I rarely see from her. She's rather subdued, I guess you could say. Sure. What do you think causes that? What do you think is, is it not, is it not being on a, in alignment? Um, who we are, maybe, or, or not I think our purpose, because I feel like enthusiasm should come naturally. When, it when should. Um, now she has self image issues. Okay. And I do too. That's something I have to deal with every day. Um, cause my childhood was no picnic. Um, there was a lot of things that happened there. Um, but I came through childhood and went into life. I had accepted that I was worthless and that I was a moron and I just accepted it. Okay. And I just did it anyways, but it made for some awkward moments when one of the popular kids would talk to me and know my name. And I was like, how does he know my name? He's one of the popular kids. Sometimes it would startle me. And uh, I got into lifting weights. They, th they thought it'd be good for my confidence. It wasn't exactly the opposite. Once I enjoyed it, it was goal oriented. I could do it by myself for the most part until I got stuck with some weight on my neck. So I went that same day, pushed the weight off, went down to Gold's Gym in Toronto and I joined. Um, I was up north in a grocery store and this girl just stopped at me and she just went and that scared me so much I ran out of the store I had no self-confidence whatsoever but I looked damn good I must say I wish I had pictures I was 185 pounds 
and I had a 50 inch chest, 18 and a half inch arms and calves, 28 inch legs, 29 inch waist, and I'm five foot eight. So that was my best bodybuilding shape ever. Um, now, now I'm 260 pounds, so, and, and a little flabby. I don't know. Hold him, hold him up again. Yeah, oh, they're about they seventeen and a half. Muscle there for sure. Right? Yeah. Oh, there's muscle there, and I can still. <laughs> I was I I didn't know my own strength, and uh, but uh, I learned enough Taekwondo. I I once accidentally threw my friend into the bushes. I kind of launched him off the sidewalk, and he went. Poof, and I was like, oh shit. Because <laughs> I was just like this, you know. I remember seeing a guy in high school. He he worked at his father's factory all summer. And when he came back, he was thick all over. And I saw him launch someone across the hallway into a locker really hard. And I was like, wow, how did he get, how did he do that? And that's what I was talking about to my friend. And he, and I said, he just went like this. Oh, and my friend was like, Whew. oh, wow, I can do that too. <laughs> but my chest is, you know, I have chest dwarfs disease now. My chest fell into my drawers and uh, got to work on that. Now I need a bra and... Uh, <laughs> But yeah, it used to it used to come out from here, but because my sure. my rotator cuff is almost completely torn, I haven't been able to do any 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 kind of uh, upper body work. Um, and before it got to the almost completely tor torn spot, I, I tried to adjust my mother's fence with one arm, and I used to be able to do that. Just get the door so it would latch properly. Just lift slowly until you creak 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 creak, and it would shift, and then you could do it. Well, I did that. I started lifting, and bing. Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. And that was the end of that. But I did a 12 week, a 12 week experiment as Ty Lopez likes to call them. I did uh, um, push-ups just against like something that was waist level, so not full push-ups. I, I used the bar to hold on to. This was all on the cab while I was guarding on the train. And I simulated leg press. I didn't do more than eight reps. I did like three sets of eight reps and then some isotonic kind of exercise. Mm -hmm. And in 12 weeks, I gained 10 pounds. My back muscles woke up again. And apparently my ass must have looked really good because this guy was poking it one day on the way home. <laughs> I'm standing there with my wife. And I said, did you just touch my butt? No. Well, someone says, someone's touching my butt. And I saw this Asian guy. And he had this, he looked kind of slimy. But he had been poking me in the ass. Hey, what the fuck are you? And I get off, and then he, he he had to take one more shot as I get off the train, and he hits the fucking bullseye, and he's just there. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, like, I just felt like backhanding him, but the train was packed full of people. And uh, I'm not much of it. I don't really go around hitting people either. Um, I, I usually um, go about to go after somebody the mental way. Um I um, I am very logical, and I like to tear people's excuses apart if they offer them. Isn't that fun to do? I mean, it, it being able to do that is, hey, you know, but that that's helpful to people. Yeah, like, I, you know, I always say, I say, if you're going to use an excuse, I just pick one and use it because anyone will work as long as you use it. It doesn't matter yeah, what it sure. is. Oh, excuse me. Oh, I have, yeah, I have. Excuses are, they, they, they definitely, they don't serve a single purpose other than keeping us in shit. Yeah, I am, um, I have a uh, runny nose syndrome. Uh, <laughs> my whole family has it, um, especially when it's dusty or, or dry. So usually we have tissues close by and I don't, um, but it should be okay shouldn't be too bad but when i go when i go out from the cold into a warm my nose runs and i have the same problem actually that used to be annoying in school mm -hmm. and when i when it was hot outside and the air conditioning was cold i remember one exam i was writing the whole exam i'm going <laughs> and we were in the lunchroom and it was big and echoing and people were so angry at me because they said can't believe it for an hour and a half all i heard was <laughs> I better not fail because of you. And I said, if you fail, it's your own fault for not knowing the subject. <laughs> and and I wasn't too involved other than that in high school. I went there from, that's where my friends were. And Sorry. I didn't didn't do homework. 
I didn't even bring my books home. Yeah. I relate to that, for sure. Um, but I did okay. I mean, I got a B average. And then they say B students wind up working for C students, and I think that's how it went with me. <laughs> I mean, I went into the family business first, but the recession in the late 80s really killed that whole industry. The part that I was in, the plastics decorating. I used right. to do silk screening. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, it was that every shop was deserted and closed by, by, by the time, by the, after that had gone through. And I was looking for a job and I said, well, you know, the transit company really has a good pension and they pay well. And after my fourth application there, the second interview, I got a job selling tickets downtown at the bus terminal. That was a lot of fun. Um, and I got laid off for three months, came back there. Then it was telephone information. That was not the best place for me to work, but I worked there for three years and I had to work hard to do well there, but I did. Um, my wife was there Now she could take 400 calls a day. That's a lot. That is a lot. For me, the best I ever did was, you know, I, I could average just over 300 a day, but that took full concentration the whole day. But that's what I did. I got up to that point and that was considered superior work, but she was, she was just on another level. I have no idea how she could do that. Um, and then I went driving and I almost didn't, but I remember I was driving a 60 foot articulated bus on a busy route and it was a beautiful day in the summer and everyone was happy to see me. And I thought, oh, I've died and gone to heaven. This is the solid job that I've been looking for. And it didn't quite last as long as I needed it to. And um, so I left in September. I was having anxiety attacks uh, uh, at least once a week. So I would be off work. And uh, they told me that? I was I was the fine at the end. I was driving the subway since 2002, okay. but I did the bus and I did the streetcar. And if you're yeah driving and operating a streetcar in a busy city, you get very, very good at defensive driving because you don't have any options except to try and stop. And uh, you can take that with you. It makes me it basically means when I'm driving on the road, the potential for anger is there in abundance when I see people doing stupid things around me. And uh, that used to be an issue too, but they uh, changed my medication, brought me down because I was, I was living life with the volume turned up to 11. And uh, I knew it. I was up almost all the time uh, because, uh, you know, being happy was something new to me. I wasn't happy until I got married. Uh, someone, someone at work who knew me over 20 years came up to me and said, wow, I'm, I'm so glad that you're finally happy after all these years. And I, I had thought that after I got my meds sorted, I was happy. Uh, no, I was just kind of normal, but I thought that was happy. And then, then once Sarah came around, then I knew I was happy. And, uh, the medication I was on, one of them was modafinil. Um, that one had that? some side, it's, um, it's an upper. Um, they subscribe, they prescribe it generally for a sleep work disorder or, or sleep okay. narcolepsy. Mm -hmm. And it's not quite a full on amphetamine. They're not exactly sure how it works, but two of the side effects, which would manifest themselves to me were excessive confidence and delusions of grandeur, excessive confidence, excessive confidence every day, every day that would happen. And I was okay with that. I, yeah, I was going to say, how is that detrimental? <laughs> <laughs> well, when they say excessive, they mean extreme. Uh, and if you're familiar with Star Trek The Next Generation and Will Riker specifically, number one, no. he, was, he, was, he was a ladies' man, very suave, very confident. And he always had a, had a smile and a twinkle in his eyes for any lady that he saw of any race, alien or otherwise. Mm -hmm. I used to get on the back of the train when I was finished. And the whole train is open. I'd walk to the front of the train, you know, purposely my my foot would impact the floor harder than it needed to people would look up and if it was a lady i'd have a twinkle in my eye and a smile for her as i walked through so i'd walk through i'd strut through the whole train doing what i called the breaker always an eye for the ladies and a smile and uh, i was so you know inside 
I am completely tickled to be doing that, and nobody complained about that. Um, and I would get up there and I would tell people, oh, I love doing the Riker. And they're like, what? And I explain it to them and they start laughing. But uh, that was just me. That's what I did. I would be so ramped up on the modafinil that uh, sometimes I'd forget to breathe as I was walking. So by the time I got up there, I was completely out of breath. And I'm trying to talk, but I can't because I'm just, I'm so excited, but I can't breathe because I forgot to breathe. <laughs> um, when I came off, when I was taken off of those and uh, Wellbutrin and Abilify, it was, it was as though I had this fiery, I could feel warmth here. And I would reach in there, you know, in my mind, whenever I would talk, talk to someone new. And when I used to ride the bus and, and train home, I always knew I was going to meet someone new every, every time. And I'd look forward to that. Whether I interact, talk, just talk, broke into a conversation with some humorous remark, which I was good at doing. Not at first, but I got better as years went on. Um, that's what I look forward to, meeting someone new every day. Yeah. And that was gone. It was like there was a, a deep pit in my chest just of emptiness. And it felt like someone stole my soul. And that was the last, that was the first day of no longer working. Um, they, they told me that it couldn't come back unless I could guarantee I wouldn't have any more anxiety. And if I had proof of that, then that would have gone to court. But I don't. Um, Need to say, I didn't go back, and I only had one anxiety attack since I left, and that was because I was going. I had to sit um, for jury duty, and I didn't feel I was quite ready, mentally prepared for that. And the Ministry of Transport requires me to have a mental health assessment once a year because of the medication I'm on, and they decided they didn't like the doctor's report and wanted it verified that I had been symptom three for three months, and that was. That was like the week before I was to go to sit for jury duty. So I said, okay, this is not going to work. So I wrote a very detailed, lengthy letter to the court officer requesting it to be excused from jury duty for these reasons. And I attached all my documentation and I wasn't shy about naming, naming uh, the Minister of Transportation or my company for, 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 um, uh, letting me revisit the anxiety attack I had that morning. And, uh, oh, when I got there, it was actually, there was a lot of people, maybe 1,500, 1,750 people in this huge room. And I was one of the ones who went to a reserve table for the medical excuse. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, who am I going to talk to today? And what, from a distance, I could feel him. It's, his name was Horace, 82 years young. I went and sat down and I introduced myself and I said, is it okay if I talk to you? And he said, yeah. So we had a nice long chat until I ran, I went completely hoarse. And then I had to adjust my voice because I didn't have water and adjust it down, modulate it down. And then I was able to tell him completely the time frame, how I met Sarah and, um, and a few other things. And he said, you know, you should be a motivational speaker. You'd be really good. Um, and I fell asleep because that happens to me too around 1130. Uh, he, and Horace is waking up, Robert, Robert, they're talking about you. The fellow who's making announcements to the whole room, he's, mm -hmm. and, and he said, all I caught was something about TTC. And, and then yes, because of that, um, this entire room, all of you are excused from jury duty for the next three years. And everyone's going, yay. And I'm like, <laughs> did I do that? Because <laughs> I, I went in uniform, my uniform jacket, because that's the only one I have that's um, warm. My leather jacket fell apart last mm -hmm. year and I worked most of the time anyway. So what, and I like actually like the uniform jacket or the new ones are pretty good. Um, so I said, Oh, wow, I did that. So I rode with Horace back to where he went on the subway and I went up to where I parked my car and I went home and I thought, Hmm. So I got the whole room excused from jury duty. How about awesome. that? Awesome. Yeah. That's it's, you know, these things, Powerful. these things only happen. These things, weird things happen to me sometimes. They're not bad things. Um, they're generally unexpected. And, um, but hey, they keep on going. They, they happen once in a while, but they only happen when I put myself out there. Yeah. And um, outside of your comfort zone, right? That's where, yeah, like I, that's where I, the I magic happens. Yeah, I could have been deeply in de deep in depression all last year, maybe even suicidal. 
well, I was for a while, but I decided with all everything that I felt was being heaped on my head by someone upstairs at my company, the more they heap this stuff on me, the kinder I'm going to be to the passengers, the more helpful I'm going to be to them. And I, I, I called it full metal jacket customer service. Yeah. And word got out. People would come up to me and start to ask me for help just to see if it was really true. As soon as they saw that it was, they say, okay, thank you and leave. And I'd be like, what? <laughs> yeah, one woman, Antonia, she said, oh, I'm your friend for life. This, I happened to share, share my lunch with her one morning. I was talking to a graphic artist um, while he waited for his bus and she came up and she just started chatting to both of us. I thought, oh, she seems really friendly. And so I said, good morning. I said, are you hungry? And I had a box, a, a plastic container with four submarine sandwiches in it. Mm -hmm. And she goes, yes. So I gave her one and, and Dex started to laugh. And I said, oh, I've got some pop for you too. And I had some diet Dr. Pepper and, and he laughed even harder, but she was going to write her social services exam. And uh, I saw her about three weeks later and she goes, do you remember me? And I thought, do you work at Sick Children's Hospital? And she goes, no, you shared your lunch with me. Oh, how did your test go? And she got 95% and she goes, you're so kind. And that was the first time I heard that said, but it wasn't the last time. But you'd see people, there'd be a group and you know, someone's talking about me and oh, well, there they are. One person's gonna come over and check it out, see if I really am like that. And I was, and I, I had that, I was there every day and the first three weeks were hell until the supervisor said, you know, you're here to get better for you. So you do whatever you have to do. You're here at the, you're here at the beginning. You'll be here at the end. What if you do in the meantime, do you want to go for walks or whatever? Go, go for it. So I had it set up. The day would fly by. I enjoyed looking. I looked forward to going there. And then I got put back on the train and uh, that was good too. Um, I made, once I'm on a train, that I had no stress. Mm -hmm. it used to be a stress, it's a stressful job. But uh, I decided, well, what can I do? Because time would fly so fast, months were starting to fly by. And I was concerned about that. I said, well, what happens when I retire? I don't want months flying by, um, or even days or weeks flying by. And I realized that the weekends last longer than the weeks, in my perception, because I did the show on Saturday, we had an after show and I did, there was the Sunday show Tokyo tonight. And then I would do an after show for that. And, uh, you know, what's different about that day. So I divided my task because I divided it up into things I could take pride in doing. Mm -hmm. Like if I stopped the train, well, I could say, yes, you did that well and take pride in that. And I didn't tell anybody was doing this. Right. Um, and if I got the doors, mm -hmm. if I did the doors just right, and I was very good at doing that. I got into a zone. I could deny, you know, because you, you know when someone's coming that's going to hold the doors. And I just reach out and sense when trouble was coming and get those doors shut and we'd be out of there. Because that's how you make up time. If you're, if you're efficient on the doors, you make up time. So I had so many opportunities to take pride in what I was doing, every station, that all the stress just melted away until there wasn't any. And I got along fine with the people at Transit Control because we're both on the same page. We're trying to run transit system. Things that other people did in management, I don't know why they were doing it, but it had nothing to do, in my opinion, with running the transit system. Mm -hmm. And it's a miracle that it runs as well as it does, in my opinion. But it's a great system. People complain about it, but they're a vocal minority. And they, don't have the, they haven't been in other cities to know that ours is really well integrated and it runs well. If I was going downtown, I would take the train because it's just, it's just that much better. And uh, parking is, is expensive. Um, so I've never been there, but yeah. I imagine. All so, cities, parking is pretty expensive enough. Oh yeah, it's exp if you can find it, if you can find it. So. And uh, I don't drink anymore, but when I did, if I was going downtown to, to a club or something, I was going downtown to drink and I certainly didn't need to be driving. That's right. Yeah. So I'd, I'd be one of those guys on the subway that's giggling. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually never been in the subway. Either. That's something I got to experience. Never been in the subway, never been to Toronto, but I'm going to change all that. I know experiencing a lot more. Um, Especially if you can meet Bob Proctor, that would be awesome. 
I'm gonna meet Bob Proctor. Yeah. Gosh, I'm gonna meet Bob Proctor. It's gonna happen. But Robert, it was good. It was good being on here. I, I do got to hop off and. Well, you know, thank you for joining me. Thank you very much, and well, thank absolutely. you for putting on those live streams. That you're welcome, and I appreciate you uh, stopping in and, and interacting and. and yeah, it it lifts me up. That. If I can do something that leaves someone feeling a little better about themselves after our interaction, that lifts me up, and that kept me out of depression. That's key. Yep, me too. I relate. Um, All right. Yeah. We'll talk again. Let's do this again. We can get on another live again. Maybe I'll throw you on my live too. And yeah, we could, we could run it from Zoom and then share it on Facebook and then people can. But I know there's a way to share it directly to Facebook, but I haven't been able to take my YouTube settings out of Zoom yet. I have to find out how well, to Well, you have both, but you have to. I had Zoom for a long time. I ran a show for four, for four months, and what I had to do was pay the monthly webinar. Um, plus your monthly other, it adds up to fifty four ninety nine, but it allows you yeah. to stream live to YouTube as well as Facebook, and you yes. can select which one on your your Zoom website. You can select which box you want to. Like I can actually use, if I don't mind lower frame rates, I can stream to Facebook and more than one YouTube channel yeah. at the same time using Minicam, yeah. and that's what was giving me the other filters. Gotcha. Yeah, this is this is Zoom and. Um, like I was, one of the filters I like using just, just when I'm in a chat, it's a, it's a distortion, they call it, the effects. And I'm just trying to go down there. Here we go. Distortions. This one's my favorite. Boom. There we go. That's really cool. Yes. How, what, is that what Anonymous uses? I don't know. I haven't watched a, a recent is. video of I theirs. Heard. They use that green distortion. It's so cool. Oh, I, I lost the effects, but um, there, there are there are quite a few effects. You know, you can add some flames into that, and or I like the burning effect too. If I could get up there, uh, yeah, you move around and everything's on fire. That's so cool. Can you do that with your? You can't do that with the guest either. Can you? My what? The guest. When you have a guest on, it doesn't affect um, it to affect theirs. Uh, I probably could if I I can I can capture the zoom window and stream it from Minicam. And that's where the frame rate will drop because all the processing has to be done on my computer instead of in the cloud. And that's where Zoom's Zoom comes in. Zoom really helped out. We streamed our life our last show using Zoom because my guest from Scotland, my friend Tom, couldn't join us. No matter what we tried, he couldn't get into the same Google Hangout as we were, even though he was on a Samsung Galaxy and everything. So we had him join the Zoom meeting, and stream, I streamed the Zoom meeting. And it was uh, very smooth, and even Simon's frame rates, that can be low because he likes to pour on the effects. His frame rates, someone said, oh, even Simon's more than 10 frames per second. Uh, yeah, so Zoom is awesome as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I love Zoom. I'm going to get it back and do mine that way. But I'm going to hop off here. Robert, let's do this again. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just end the meeting here.